Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about becoming indispensable. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do I become a non-replaceable software engineer? Is it algorithm solving skills or something else? I want to improve my skills as much faster than my peers if possible. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, so one part that you can't control is aptitude for programming and talent and things like that. But uh, if you want to improve faster than your peers, you just have to make software development uh, your priority outside of work. That, that's really what it comes down to. If you learn how to... Uh, if you if you're willing to put in the work and you learn how to learn the right way then usually these things are fairly simple uh, but as for the indisposable type of thing it's a different sort of beast so let's segment these things a little bit and let's talk about that secondary in a second so in order to learn faster you as I said you have to learn how to learn and the way that you learn how to learn is to figure out that the best way to get really good at something is, in my opinion at the very least, that's what I've always seen to work the best, is to divide up things into things you need to read up on in order to sort of understand the high level concepts and things you need to play around with and experiment with in order to get hands on experience. And using these two tools in equal, in like in appropriate measures is the key to learning faster than everybody else. Because uh, as anybody who's ever been an engineer, a scientist, or anybody who who has to do this for a living will tell you, experimentation is key for all progress in terms of knowledge. You have to experiment, and so the key for you should be to experiment as much as possible. The problem with experimentation usually is that at least some prior knowledge of things might be necessary in order to do experimentation. So that's what I tell people when I tell them if you want to be good at software development it's actually really simple. You just have to learn what you don't know or start reading about the thing you don't really know but need to know in order to achieve some goal learn enough about it so that you can then take that basic understanding you just got from reading some tutorials or something like that and then go and code and go and try to see if you can make it work and just play around with it see if it works and then repeat that process and before you know it the experiments that you make are bigger and bigger and bigger until you build entire companies from nothing because you just wanted to see if yeah, I don't know service meshes is a thing or if it's gonna work in a nice way uh, that is my biggest tip to you and I can guarantee you that that's going to in for most cases uh, it's going to make you learn faster than most of your peers because most of your peers are regular software developers and the average software developer doesn't actually do all that much coding outside of work even if that's probably what you're being sold on the internet as for becoming indispensable, indispensable, is, uh, everybody can be replaced usually. The way that you do it the best is usually that you show that you produce a lot of value. There's a very nice tech talk which is actually from a designer's point of view who's, who makes a really good argument for this idea within uh, within the within work, and I think it's a similar sort of thing with the stock market and like these sorts of high like uh, you know when people tell you to invest in things that aren't really critical for society and they talk uh, it's high volatile things and they say that it's stable when the reality is that you know stable is investing in gold stable is investing in uh, cars or like physical products or things that are like a necessity for human society and then people invest in things that don't really matter all that much and for example it doesn't really matter to unless you are a specific sort of company it doesn't really matter for you if you invest in algorithm knowledge or things like that because it's not value building for the company and in this guy he, he said that he has the same problem with designers you have designers who like go and learn and become very creatively inclined to work on things that are not really money building for the company it doesn't produce any money and that's at the end of the day when the recession hits or like things don't go as well 
the manager at your job is going to have to make a choice. There's going to be a red a red column and a, and a green column. And if you want to keep your job, you have to be in the green column. Otherwise, you're going to get axed. And it does not matter how genius you are. If you do not produce money for the company or value that is measurable to your manager, you're going to get fired. And that might sound cynical, but I really don't think so. I really think it is a wake-up call to some of these people who get out of touch with reality. And I have worked with people like this. I like to call them people who don't care about results. They are feely types of people. They they feel that things are right to do, and they can they will bankrupt a company. I've worked with more than a few of these people where they don't actually give a shit about if they're doing a good job or not. They they really don't care, and you see these people like these are the worst people in the world to have when you want to balance a budget or deliver on a project because they can go off on like expensive trips to do nothing and produce nothing, come back and say that it was a great experience and be happy that and feel like they accomplished something. And these people are, in my opinion, usually the people that should probably stay like youth counselors or daycare centers, uh, daycare teachers or something like that, where the goal is the feel in the room. The goal, goal is different from just producing hard results or money or something like that. Uh, but the people who usually are in, uh, irreplaceable, depending on your manager, are the people who can bring these sorts of results. And it's really just about you figuring out what results are necessary in order for you to become a higher value co-worker within the workspace. Usually, it comes down to being able to solve problems, helping out people, knowing the domain really, really well, which is a big part of it as well. You have to know the company and know how you do work and know how the different systems in your company work. Uh, Ideally, like in a in a sense, the perfect, most irreplaceable software developer is the full stack developer who can run all the systems and knows how all the different systems work. That is the perfect person. Like it's the last person you're going to get rid of because, simply put, that person do, can do any job that is necessary for it to run the system, and the system is where the money is coming from. So that is a way for you to sort of guide your thinking towards how do you become irreplaceable. Start by making sure that you know your coding and then make sure that you know your company's code base and the different systems that you depend on and how to use them. Uh, that is probably your safest bet. So what I want you to take away from this is that well, if you want to be, you should know that everybody is replaceable. It doesn't matter. I, there are these rumors and like ideas that if you write really shitty code, then you know you're irreplaceable and so forth. Uh, that's not true. You can absolutely make it very difficult to fire you by doing stuff like that, but it's going to hurt your career in other ways uh, potentially. And as I like to say to people, software isn't magic. That means that even if you wrote the most horrendous code that you can imagine, someone else can figure out how it works. I promise you that much. And the uh, the end result there is going to be that if you don't fit in at your place of work or something like that, or you don't have the necessary skills to do the job, you're going to get replaced. And that's why your best bet is usually to start off making sure that you know your stuff, you can produce good results, you know your domain, you know how the different systems at your company works and how to answer stakeholder questions, things like that. You know how to run a healthy IT organization and all the systems related to the work that you are doing. That is your best bet because that means that you can do any job, like whatever the company needs you sort of can deal with it. And as for improving your skills faster than your peers, Learn how to measure both use learning by reading and like doing tutorials and then experimentation because the, the the ideal thing to do is usually to go and learn and read about something and then go and experiment and try it out in reality. And if you can do this right, uh, you will probably learn quite fast in comparison to most of the people. Have a great day.